The Old Man and the Sea, Ernest Hemingway, 3 of 20. 여러분 안녕하세요. The Old Man and the Sea, 노인과 바다, 20회 나눠 읽기 세 번째 시간입니다. 슬라이드 10개의 화면으로 구성하였습니다. 소설책으로는 13페이지부터 18페이지까지입니다. 방송시간은 7분 30초를 예상하고 있습니다. 마지막 페이지 119페이지를 향해서 출발하겠습니다. I'm ready now, the old man said. I only needed the time to wash. Where did you wash? The boy thought. The village water supply was two streets down the road. I must have water here for him, the boy thought, and soup and a good towel. Why am I so thoughtless? I must get him another shirt and a jacket for the winter and some sort of shoes and another blanket. Your stew is excellent, the old man said. Tell me about the baseball, the boy asked him. In the American League, it is the Yankees, as I said, the old man said happily. They lost today, the boy told him. That means nothing. The great DiMaggio is himself again. They have other men on the team, naturally, but he makes a difference. In the other league between Brooklyn and Philadelphia, I must take Brooklyn. But then I think of Dick Sisler and those great drives in the old park. There was nothing ever like them. He hits the longest ball I have ever seen. Do you remember when he used to come to the terrace? I wanted to take him fishing, but I was too timid to ask him. Then I asked you to ask him, and you were too timid. I know. It was a great mistake. He might have gone with us, then we would have that for all of our lives. I would like to take the great DiMaggio fishing, the old man said. They say his father was a fisherman. Maybe he was as poor as we are and would understand. The great Sicilian's father was never poor, and he, the father, was playing in the big leagues when he was my age. When I was your age, I was before the mast on a square rigged ship that ran to Africa, and I have seen lions on the beaches in the evening. I know, you told me. Should we talk about Africa or about baseball? Baseball, I think, the boy said. Tell me about the great John J. McGraw. He said, Hota for Jay. He used to come to the terrace sometimes, too, in the old days. But he was rough and harsh spoken and difficult when he was drinking. His mind was on horses as well as baseball. At least he carried the list of horses at all times in his pocket and frequently spoke the names of horses on the telephone. He was a great manager, the boy said. My father thinks he was the greatest. Because he came here the most times, the old man said. If Drosha had continued to come here each year, your father would think him the greatest manager. Who is the greatest manager, really? Luke or Mike Gonzalez? I think they are equal. And the best fisherman is you. No, I know others better. Keva, the boy said. There are many good fishermen and some great ones, but there is only you. Thank you. You make him happy. I hope no fish will come along so great that he will prove us wrong. There is no such fish if you are still strong, as you say. I may not be as strong as I think, the old man said, but I know many tricks and I have a resolution. You ought to go to bed now so that you will be fresh in the morning. I take the things back to the terrace. Good night then. I wake you in the morning. You are my alarm clock, the boy said. Age is my alarm clock, the old man said. Why do old men wake so early? Is it to have one longer day? I don't know, the boy said. All I know is that young boys sleep late and hard. I can remember it, the old man said. I'll wake you in time. I do not like for him to wake me. It is as though I were inferior. I know. Sleep well, old man. The boy went out. They had eaten with no light on a table, and the old man took off his trousers and went to bed in the dark. He rolled his trousers up to make a pillow, putting the newspaper inside them. He rolled himself in the blanket and slept on the other old papers that covered the springs of the bed. He was asleep in a short time, and he dreamed of Africa when he was a boy, 
and the long golden beaches and the white beaches so white they hurt your eyes and the high caves and the great brown mountains he lived along that coast now every night and in his dreams he heard a soft roar and saw the native boats come riding through it he smelled the tar and oakum of the deck as he slept and he smelled the smell of africa that land breeze brought at morning usually when he smelled the land breeze he woke up and dressed to go and wake the boy but tonight the smell of the land breeze came very early and he knew it was too early in his dream and went on dreaming to see the white peaks of the islands rising from the sea and then he dreamed of the different harbors and road stairs of the canary islands he no longer dreamed of storms nor of women nor of great occurrences nor of great fish no fires nor contest of strength nor of his wife he only dreamed of places now and of the lions on a beach they played like young cats in the dusk and he loved them as he loved the boy he never dreamed about the boy he simply walked looked out the open door at the moon and unrolled his trousers and put them on he urinated outside the shack and then went up the road to wake the boy he was shivering with the morning cold but he knew he would shiver himself warm and that soon he would be roaring the door of the house where the boy lived was unlocked and he opened it and walked in quietly with his bare feet the boy was asleep on a cot in the first room and the old man could see him clearly with the light that came in from the dying moon he took hold of one foot gently and held it until the boy woke and turned and looked at him the old man nodded and the boy took his trousers from the chair by the bed and sitting on the bed pulled them on the old man went out the door and the boy came after him he was sleepy and the old man put his arm across his shoulders and said i'm sorry Kiva, the boy said it is what a man must do they walked down the road to the old man's shack and all along the road in the dark barefoot men were moving carrying the mass of their boats